Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we are looking at the CEU Sabertooth Corvette which is this thing right here. Now this caught me off guard once again like the last ship did is that it's a large ship. This thing looks a lot smaller on the actual workshop page itself to the point where I thought it was a small block ship. So let's press F10 and I shall show you. So finding the saber tooth, there it is. This ship weighs in at 9,193 blocks, but does it? No, it doesn't. It's actually 3,065 large blocks. So let's start by going around the outside, then we'll have a little tour of the inside, and then we'll go have a little play around shooting all these rockets on it. So at the very front, at this viewing port right here, which is how our camera is going to view force. It's quite a limited view. There is the camera right there. Yes, it's a very limited view. That's my one complaint on this ship, but it's serviceable. Surrounding that viewport is a bunch of rocket launches that have been set up in the way that they fire on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pattern. This has been surrounded by some lovely block work using what I believe is the clean skin. So we've got some grey and we've got some white. Just going all the way around, just a nice way of hiding it and making sure that the camera is fully protected from any kind of stray bullets coming in. To the left and the right we have our first little pointy part, which I've completely forgotten what they're called, so I'll just call it a pointy part, where it goes across and it's just being all fancy. It does have a gun on the opposite side, but if I was to come all the way through here, you can see how the convey is going from the main body of the ship all the way through over to here and this will pop out to where the interior turrets are on the opposite side and further along to the very end we have a proper gatling gun. So that is one way of just funneling all the ammunition into them without having to manually reload them. But these little pointy parts are the grey clean skins with the nice white half slope blocks going all the way along and they do look bloody fantastic. We've got some catwalks there just to hide the conveyors behind them. We even have some windows all the way back here just to do the same but just spice it up a little bit more. If I was just to drop down and look underneath there we've got some nice block work patterns there just so it's not a straight line and looks boring. We've got some blinking lights now these ones I will have to zoom out and come down below and turn off my light but yes the blinking lights at the front go all the way to the back of the ship in this lovely pattern. I've always wanted to set this up but it always takes such a long time to get right. Yeah, as you can see, we've got some hydrogen thrusters on this ship, so we are good for basically all atmospheres, although this ship does tend to struggle in a low gravity atmosphere. So returning back to the front of the ship, let's go around properly on the side there by looking at the front. So that is the very front there. There we are. And then moving around to the side, we've got our Gatling guns. We've got our interior turrets that I talked about earlier. You can see the conveyors in there, which have been hidden via some windows. And then coming along to our first wing, we've got a large hydrogen thruster. This makes sure we can stop in a reasonable amount of time, but we do have a special script, much like, I can't remember which ship it was, but it will flip you around and stop you very, very quickly in case you don't want to rely on these thrusters. So moving across, we've got some more interior turrets. And then coming across from that, we got some rocket launchers, yes. So these rocket turrets have been placed on the very edge there. So you're going to automatically blast your enemies if they get within range of this ship. We have a blinking red light on the very edge there. In fact, we've got two of them, just so you can see it from a distance. If I was to come like this. Oh, maybe that's too far. There you go. You sort of see it blinking. You can see between the two rocket turrets the conveyors which are going through, which are connecting them all up. And then we can see the conveyors right here, which are leading along into the main body of the ship. They are a little bit exposed, so they could be shot out and disable your rocket turrets, but it's not too much to worry about. The amount of guns on this ship is going to ensure that basically it doesn't happen unless you're going up against an Atlas super laser. So moving along to the back of this little wing part, we can see we've got some blast door parts in a nice clean grey and it's just some fancy block work that makes it look great. So moving along we can see we've got some more hydrogen thrusters, we've got eight of them for the left and the right and they've been surrounded by some more nice block work. It makes you sick doesn't it? Like for me my ships are not that amazing, I've always dreamt of trying to build 
these types of really fancy ships, but they never turn out right. I still forget how people can do this. But anyway, let's move towards the back of the ship to where we got our main thrusters, which are large hydrogen thrusters. We got an antenna at the very back there, and above that, we got some little fins which are in a dark bluey type colour. Moving down, we got some more interior turrets to ensure the rear of the ship is nice and safe because you can get into the ship by flying through this gap right here. So there is accessible up here through this door to ensure you can do maintenance. So those turrets are there to make sure some sneaky so-and-so doesn't come in and try and do nefarious stuff. So moving along in this bit right here between the two wings, we've got still some nice block work. We've got some more thrusters right there just to help on the left. And then we can come along all the way around to the front. Which leads us to the very top. So on the top here, we've got some windows on either side. The return of the blue blocks going up to the very top. We've got a logo right there. Let me just turn off my light. I don't think you'll be able to see it too well. But there it is. We've got two more rocket turrets right above us to ensure maximum destruction when the enemies fly by. And then that leads us to the rear of the ship. Coming down and below that, past the antenna, we've got some more hydrogen thrusters and even more rocket turrets. Yes, so many rocket turrets on this. When this thing open fires, it's quite spectacular. But we can see we've got lots and lots of hydrogen thrusters on there in every which way to ensure we've got plenty of mobility. And we do have a connector with a merge block. It does seem like this is the standard for ships nowadays. One merge block, one connector to ensure you're completely and safely connected basically. Attached to the merge block we've got a ramp which then goes down to another blue block and there are the flashing lights from earlier go all the way along the ship. So if I was to come all the way around to here, all the way up, I think I miss it, no I didn't, it's right here. We do have a ramp which is just behind the antenna which is how we're going to get into the ship. But there is an interior turret sitting right there to ensure that only the correct people enter this ship. And with that said, let me get into my character and enter said ship. So we need to fly all the way down and underneath. In fact, I'll keep my light on for the moment. And we're going to enter the ship via this part right here. We do have a stairs block right here, so if I just walked along here, we would be blasted by that interior turret if we were an enemy. We can open up this red door, come through. We have the whips, auto door and airlock system on here, so we cannot open up this door while that one is open. So there's that. And closing that. And we are now on the interior. We have a small ladder to uh, crawl up. And this is the first room that greets us. So we've got some more ladders which we can climb up, which is how we're going to get to our main cockpit. We can see we've got a gravity generator on here to make sure that we don't float away. Although it's not as powerful as a regular atmosphere, it does kind of give you a bit of a low gravity feeling to it. We got some cryopods, I believe they're on both sides. Nope, it's just on one side, one cryopod for you to quickly recharge yourself on. If I bring up this and come over to here, we've got an assembler to make sure we can build stuff. On the opposite side, we've got an air vent to make sure we don't suffocate, a cargo container to store stuff in and to put rockets in to make sure the rocket launchers have something to fire, a survival kit to respawn on and to heal on, Opening up this door and coming through, we have an array of programmable blocks and gyroscopes. Yes, they're all the way around this room. There's quite a lot going on with the ship. So the first programmable block here is the turret control systems. This one is the floor plan script. Then moving across to this one, I believe this is simply the... Nope, that is the retro braking system, the one where you flip the ship around and it will help you slow down if you don't have good reverse thrusters. Moving across to the next programmable block around here. This one might be an empty one. Yeah, this one is an empty programmable block with nothing much going on with it. We then have this one over here. Oh, that one actually said something on there. That's the artificial horizon. And then last but not least, we have the whips, auto door and airlock system, which I talked about earlier. So we do have a, quite a lot of scripts on this ship. And if scripts are not your things, you can quite easily just turn them off in your world setting and this ship will still be perfectly fine to fly around and use. Coming back through here, past all the gyroscopes going around the room, past the cargo containers, we have this little feature right here, which is a bunch of gyroscopes, and I believe they're attached onto a... If 
fact, I'm not sure what they're attached onto. I might have to start grinding stuff up here. So grinding away the gyroscope. There we go. Ah, they're just plain steel blocks. It was the actual base of the gyroscopes, which was confusing me there for a second. Yes, that is basically it for this room. A lot of gyroscopes and a lot of programmable blocks. We do have an auction tank on both sides there. That is your reserve auction for the air vents. And then moving around here up this ladder, we have another gyroscope. There's the gravity generator. And this room is how we're going to fly it. We've got some more programmable blocks around here, just two more. This one, all right, that's the automatic LCD screen. And the opposite side contains the weapon salvo code, which is how the rockets will fire in their pattern. We've got some more cargo containers going all the way around the room. Nice use of the sloped windows, which I call stairs. So they're basically stairs, aren't they? They're not windows, they're stairs. And then on the opposite side, we've got more cargo containers. Just going through all this, you can see we've got our survival kits. There's some reactors, timer blocks, welders for our auto repair system. There are the rocket launchers, O2 H2 generators, missile turrets, merge blocks, jump drives. Yes, this ship features two jump drives. And there are the interior turrets, interior lights, hydrogen thrusters, gyroscopes, a lot of gyroscopes on this ship. And yes, decoys to make sure that your main body doesn't get hit. Just coming across to this, that's the PCU limit. Thrust account, conveyors, lights and all that. So yes, that is all the important information on the ship, which then leads us to the flight seat. But in front of that, there's our LCD screens for the automatic horizon. There's our navigation status and there's our floor plan. So getting into the seat and coming into first person, we can't see much, can we? No, we can't see it outside whatsoever, but we can just turn around and let the artificial horizon do its thing. So pressing number two is how we're going to view from our first person perspective. So looking forwards, that's all we're going to get is a very tight view. It might be used to have like some kind of periscope on this just to push it up and make sure you get a better view. because That is quite limiting. Coming out of that and into the third person. Now we're going to fire the rocket. So let me just find this and come around. Look at them fire. How lovely is that? Number three and number four are the auto repair system. So what I've done is basically remove some of the blocks on this ship. So I'm just going to put the projector on. There we go. It's now projecting the blocks that have been lost. And then I'm going to switch on the auto repair system, which won't do much because they only really affect the core internals of the ship. But if you had a build and repair system, you could just fly by and it would just patch you up and bring you back to its original design. So there is that. But I'm just going to turn them off because they're quite performance heavy. But I'll leave the projector on. Number five is the interior turrets. Six for the rockets. Seven for the rockets. And number eight for the lights on the bottom. So looking down there, nothing is happening. Eight. And then they switch on. Number nine is our retro dampeners or whatever they were called. So if I fly forwards at maximum speed, press number nine. Dampeners turn off. Our ship automatically flips around. And then once it is sorted itself out, damage is turned on automatically and it begins to boost forwards in order to stop you within a decent time. Although this ship doesn't really need it, it has pretty good stopping speed by itself. So let me just go forwards and then start stopping. It is pretty decent at stopping without it. Although it is much faster just to press that button. But there we go. So with that all done, that is everything on the hot bar itself. Let's do a quick little thruster test. Let me bring back the sun. I believe I lost it. There we go. Then I'll spawn in an enemy and let it blast it with all the rockets. So moving forwards, we're very fast going forwards. Those large hydrogen thrusters are doing a lot of work there. Stopping speed is pretty good as well, although it does leave a lot to be desired. But that is why the number nine programmable block exists. Going left, we got pretty good speed on that. Going right, there we go, pretty good. And going backwards again is pretty good speed. Going down, still pretty good. It's a very well balanced ship this one. And going up, it seems really well balanced all the way around with the only oddball being going forwards which is a lot faster than everything else. But that is logical considering how many large hydrogen thrusters 
are at the very back. So what I've done is given the crashed red ship to the pirates and we're just going to fly along and just switch everything on and fire all the rockets. Now you might be seeing there that I am damaging myself so I will have to put the auto repair system on there to ensure I don't damage myself. There we go, there are all the rockets firing into it. It's actually really good, isn't it? Look at all the rockets just spread around. Oh, look at, look at them all go. Then we can just keep flying a bit closer. I think the rockets have stopped firing. I don't think there's anything that they consider an enemy left on that ship. This is doing wonderfully. But we could just keep pushing this along. Let's look in first person. We can't really see too much in first person. There's so much smoke in there. Yes, oh, that was a lot of destruction. But yes, this is the CEU Sabertooth Corvette. It will be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.